Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome everyone here to our Wednesday night Bible study here at Beverly Hills Baptist Church. If you're our guest, we thank you for tuning in. And if you would like a copy of tonight's study, please contact me and I will get one to you. Our study tonight is Bible Doctrines Part 45 in the Doctrine of Soteriology or the Doctrine of Salvation. And Part 45 tonight, we're going to take a look at faith. Now, what is faith? The Bible has this to say about faith. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Hebrews 11, verse 1. Faith should be understood as synonymous with trust or confidence in something. But within Christianity, it is the divine gift and comes by hearing the word of God. It is the means by which the grace of God is accounted to the believer who trusts in the works of Jesus on the cross. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. It is by faith that Christians even live their life. As it is written in Habakkuk 2.4 in Romans chapter 117, the righteous shall live by faith. Faith is a gift from God. It is by which we are counted righteous through the works of Jesus on the cross. Faith is the assurance of things that we hope in, but it's the conviction of things not seen. It's something that we can't put in a jar, something we can't measure, but faith is given to every believer. Now, I want to ask you a question. Have you ever been in a situation where your faith was tested? And I mean, has your faith really been tested? Or have you ever wondered where God is in the midst of your difficulties, even though you've been crying out to Him for deliverance and have seen none? Have you ever found yourself with nowhere to turn, no real answers, no light at the end of the tunnel? Uh, have your heart and your mind been filled with both anguish, doubts, fears, and even commotions, and faith seems more like a distant concept than a present reality? I have, and if you've been a Christian for long enough, I know that you have too. I've seen my faith tested many a times, sometimes more than I even care to see it from having loved ones uh, facing illnesses, seeing loved ones pass away, um, living in dire times, wondering when the next meal was going to come or if I was going to have enough of a paycheck to make it from week to week. And maybe even has your faith been tested beyond those, maybe even more than those things. Why does it that God allows us to go through these desert times of the testing of our faith? Well, James, in his gospel, plainly tells us. James writes, Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect result, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. James chapter 1, verses 2-4. through four. James knew what it meant to live by faith, and he knew what it meant to have his faith purified. James, like all the other disciples and all of those in New Testament time, knew what it meant to live by faith, and they knew what it meant to have their faith tested. In the New Testament time period, uh, we know from history that out of the 12 disciples, uh, 11 of them uh, were murdered. Uh, 11 of them were martyred for their faith. And many of Christians in the New Testament, uh, and even in our world today, know what it means to have their faith tested. Uh, there are countries around the world that if you are caught uh, spreading the gospel, teaching Christianity, that you can be uh, exiled from their country. Uh, if you're from America, they'll send you back to America. And if you're from that country, they will exile you. And even in some places, they will take your life and I can't imagine what it must feel like to know that if you're caught, that you could be martyred uh, for your belief in God. That is the ultimate uh, in testing of your faith. You see, for a lot of people, it's easy to have faith in God when we're sitting in our easy chairs, in our air-conditioned homes, with our remote controls in one hand and a bag of chips in the other. That kind of faith is easy. However, it leads to nowhere except for the easy chair. But it takes uh, it all away when you find out what kind of faith you really have. Take away your comforts and your security, and then what kind of faith do you have in God? Will you quickly find out 
uh, what you're really made of. Will you bemoan your circumstances and whine at God? Or will you turn to Him in the midst of your trials and by faith praise His name and continue to trust Him even beyond your ability to understand? Real trials provide us with a rare opportunity to actually praise the Lord of heaven when life is difficult. It is that kind of faith and it is that kind of praise that is pleasing to God. Hebrews chapter 11. And it is that kind of faith that builds your character. Faith gives us the strength that we need to carry on in the times of worry, doubt, fear, and even persecution. Faith is what we see in God. Faith is what we have in God. Faith is what we know in God. Now, I want to turn the subject just a little bit. And I want to provide you with a little controversy. Uh, faith does not save you. Now, let me say that again. Did you get that? Faith does not save you. Faith is not a substance that you can put in a jar or detect with a meter. Faith isn't a cream that you apply to protect you from something. Faith is belief, trust, uh, confidence in, and etc. The key to understanding faith lies not in faith itself, but in the object of faith. Faith lies in the object of what you put that faith in, and that is God. That is who our faith is in. Faith doesn't save us, but God saves us, and we put our faith in God. Faith is only as good as who you put it in. Faith is a false god, or faith in a false god uh, is useless, and it doesn't save you. But faith in the true God does save you. You see the difference? Faith is only as good as who you put it in. If you put your faith in uh, uh, someone who is human, they will let you down. If you put your faith in a false god, it will lead to damnation. But if you put your faith in the true God and your faith is in Jesus, then that will result in salvation. Faith, uh, finally, I want us to understand that faith works because of who it is placed in. Not of itself, but who we take that faith and put it in. It is not a thing uh, dependent upon you for its vitality. Uh, it is not made real by you. It is made real by who you place it in. That is why true faith in the true God is independent of your circumstances. Now take, for instance, Romans chapter 12, verse 3. It says that God gives a measure of faith to everyone. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 3 says, uh, For by the grace given to me, I tell everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he should. Instead, think sensibly, Paul says, as God has distributed a measure of faith to each one. Now, uh, okay, so what do you do with this measure of faith? The Bible tells us that we must have faith in God and that God gives us a little measure of that faith. So what do we do with this measure of faith? During trials and tribulations, do you withdraw it from your spiritual walk, whine and complain, only to be faithful again when things seem to get better and more comfortable? Or do you continue on in faith because of the creator of the universe? Uh, are you faithful because God is faithful? Or do you have faith and it weaken when you are weakened? Uh, do you continue on in faith because it's uh, of the creator and universe in spite of your circumstances and do exactly what the Bible says? Do you live by faith? As the Bible says in Habakkuk 2, 4, the just shall live by faith. And so the question becomes, what do you do with this faith when it is given to you? Do you put your trust in the Lord and let that faith grow? Or does it become wishy-washy with the seasons of which you struggle in times and trials? To live by faith means that you continue on trusting God because your faith is in Him and not in your comforts, not in your health, and not even in your needs or emotions or even your intellect. 
To live by faith means that you trust in the Lord in all circumstances. In all situations, you trust in the Lord. In this, God is glorified. Do you think that the God of glory, who died on the cross and rose from the dead, is going to leave you or forsake you? He cannot. Therefore, your faith in him is well placed. Uh, but remember, his uh, perfecting of your faith sometimes require you to actually live by it and keep it. Keep your eyes on him and remember that his love and his commitment to you was proven on the cross. That will make it easier to endure the times of perfecting your faith. And so what I want us to understand in conclusion is that it is by faith in Christ that we carry through. When we feel as if though we can't, we're tired, weary, fearfulness uh, ensues in us. When we are afraid and we don't know what to do, it is not the trust of faith, but it is who that faith is entrusted to, and that is God. We put our faith in God, and God will carry you through. Now, my encouragement to you is with this little measure of faith that is given to you, grow that faith. Put your trust in God in all circumstances, even the itty-bitty small things, even when your vacuum cleaner breaks, uh, even when your washing machine stops working, even when the electricity goes out, even when the internet uh, begins to fail, uh, when you have an argument with your uh, children, uh, when you have an argument with your spouse, when your financial struggles uh, began to crawl and creep up on you. Uh, when this world seems like it's completely falling apart and everything seems in complete chaos, remember who your faith is in. Put your faith in God. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you that we can gather to worship you and to know that we have complete trust in you and that if we put our faith in you, that that trust will be built, and that the faith we have is a gift from you. From the beginning of salvation, knowing that, the, that faith is given to us so that we may believe, and then throughout all of our Christian life uh, here on earth, that our faith is devoted to you, and that you grow that faith so that we may trust in you. Thank you, Father, for all that you've done. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I am very excited to tell you that uh, here at Beverly Hills Baptist Church, we have begun to meet in person uh, on Sunday mornings at 11 o'clock. And if you do not have a church home, we would love for you to come and be our guest. Uh, we are meeting again Sunday mornings at 11 o'clock, and we have our normal worship service that morning. Uh, hopefully in the uh, future, we will continue on with our Sunday night services and even Sunday school. Uh, we are maintaining social distancing and practicing safe protocols so that uh, we do not make anyone sick. But we are very excited that the Lord has continued to work and that we are able to meet again. I am very excited that you tuned in with us tonight. Again, if you'd like a copy, please uh, send me a message and I will get a copy of tonight's study to you. My prayer is that the Lord will continue to strengthen your faith in Him and that you will continue to put your faith in God, not in your circumstances, not in the things around you, but your faith in Him. May the Lord bless you, and may the Lord keep you safe.